Nuggets. The Nuggets. Wow. Absolutely Super. correct. The Nuggets will get you more candy. Let's talk about Nuggets. Was this number one? Was this number two? I feel like. Number three Nugget, write this down. Auto traders got a chat that's patented. This chat could make anyone look and sound intelligent. Are you on chat right now? What kind of a chat? Is that ours? Mm -hmm. Do you have the one that says serial number, options, stock number? That, that was number three, but you already have it. You guys are smart. So, chat was number three. Okay. Number four. We want to make sure that our customers are walking billboards for us. Is that something important? Yes. When they leave you, they say, that's the guy that's going to get all my business. So, how many cars do we average in the room here? 10, 15? National average is 12. Okay. There's a salesperson in San Diego or no, it's in the uh, Phoenix area. Sells 65 Mercedes a month. Watch how he does it. His friends are his customers on Facebook. When he sells a car, do you have a smartphone? Do you have a smartphone? I can see it. Right. My customer, I'm the salesman. You and I work together. Pay close attention. This is huge. This could be a difference between you selling three, four more cars a month. My customer, I'm the salesman, just bought that car right there. Mr. Customer, would you mind, after spending four hours with me and liking me and loving your car and trusting me, would you mind if I put your new car on your Facebook page? He's probably not going to say no to me because we'll become friends right then. So here's what you do. This is my coworker. He's going to take a photo of us. Don't forget the car. <laughs> Click. Okay, you guys do that. But then, do you know how Facebook it becomes annoying when people talk about what they have, or what they do, the kids are this and that? So there's a certain way that Dante does. He goes in there and puts the picture on your customer's Facebook, and the headline reads, picture is worth a thousand and it follows it up it was an honor and pleasure to serve you thank you for choosing me to do your business with puts his name company's name and a phone number so my customers got 397 friends out of the 397 friends 10 percent are going to see the post like it comment on it Anyone else? How many is that, 40? Out of the 40 people that are gonna like it, comment it, or just see it, 10% of those are gonna be interested in a car, or they themselves know somebody that is in the market for a car. How many is that, four people? Let me ask you. Those people that hit like or comment, every single friend they have, shows up on there as well that they like that phone, so they see that. Hold on to the thought for a second. Facebook is huge. Done properly, this thing could mushroom for you. He sells 65 Mercedes Benz per month on account of mushrooming and who he is. So the picture's worth a thousand words. It was a pleasure and honor to serve you. Name it, his name, his dealership's name, his phone number. So those four people that they themselves, or they know somebody, even if they're not ready to move forward now, they're going to remember Rafi just bought a car and go back to his timeline and they're going to find out who. They're going to contact you in the time the future. That is called mushrooming and having people be a walk and go for us. Now, is your customer and his friend going to talk with one another? Maybe. Maybe not. Maybe they just see the post and if they trust that or hey, when he spend his money at um, Alhambra VW, then that's a good place to go do business with. And they're gonna walk in being what? Repeat and referral, and what kind of a mindset is on a repeat and referral customer? Higher closing. They're sold on you and your dealership, they just need to be sold on the car. So that would be your number three, number four rather, right? Number four is Facebook. 
brings me to last one, number five. You guys, we're right on time. We started at 1.15, it's 4.15 right now. We can break and everything. I literally only have five more minutes here, but this is huge. Somebody give me a business card. Never mind. One of my salespeople makes a phone call from a kid. Kid calls in, he takes the call, and he quickly finds out it's a kid. Doesn't even time a day. Kid was calling in about a, a uh, white 2010 Camaro that was souped up by a previous customer and traded in. Kid calls about the car, doesn't even time a day, he says, hey, yeah, we have the car. He gets his phone number, he gets the kid's phone number. He comes up to my office and says, you know what, I did wrong. I treated him like a kid, I didn't give him my time and attention, I didn't do it right. Next day, the kid and his dad rolling in the Jaguar. They come to the front line, get out of the car, they walk to the reception, this girl says, Carol says, can I be of service? We're here to look at a car, we need a salesman. Kid says, wait. We want Craig Jones. They call Craig up here. He quickly finds out who the customer is. They walk up to the Camaro go for a test drive. They come back. They buy the car. Four thousand three hundred dollar gross, a thousand dollar voucher. He comes to my office and says, "Boss, I got to be honest with you. I didn't this, did this, kid, this kid a time of day. But what he did do, he took a photocopy of his business card, texted it. Wow, great so I said, I told that story in March. Guy calls me two months ago. He says, I did one better for you. I took that business card story and I added my photo to it. Now the customers send it, they see who I am, my information, everything. And when you text something to somebody's phone, where does it go? It's saved right in there until you do what? You blow it out, right? It stays in there. So two months ago, I told that story Another guy called me about a month ago or three weeks ago. He said, I did one better than that. So I encourage all of you to call me and give me information. I won't share it in the same area. I'll take your story <laughs> to somewhere else. So what he said he did, he said one day he just sat. We had three or four hours between ups. He said he took every single person in his phone, family, friends, whoever he knew. He texted them his business card and his picture. He said, I've taken eight or nine cars out of just people that know who I am. Now they know where I'm at and what they're doing. They have the card in their work. That's funny. Yeah, Sean, that's, that's a very good point because what happens, in my experience being on the floor, back then not having this technology when we started, um, a lot of friends and family, like, if you see them eventually down the line and they've bought a car and they're like, if I only knew. Didn't know. I had only had known you were working at that store. And you can't blame them at that point because you know you can't get to everybody. But here it is, nowadays we have 200 plus contacts in there. We haven't made contact with half of them for over six months, but hey, what about sending them a picture of your of your business card? That's, that's strong, that's a strong nugget right there. How many people liked what they saw here today? Everybody? Yep. So if you like something, how many people are going to let know? If you like, if you like an experience with somebody, how many people are you going to tell? This? Couple. Couple. So I'm not expecting you to go tell anybody anything. But one thing I do ask for you. You guys remember when I talked to you about this? I'm hoping to hear in a sentence or two how you felt about me being here today and connecting with you today. I want to thank all of you for being here. And if there's any questions, let me have it. Otherwise, a pleasure serving you. Yes, sir. Uh, one other very big social media that's evolving now than on Facebook is Instagram. Mm -hmm. and it's all about pictures. So it's another big thing. Remember when I showed you pictures of my family and my habits to people? Customers are all visual, but there is no audio. We got to put that feeling back into it. How do we do it? I just shared it with you. How do you slow them down on the phone? Hello. Ask me personally. How are you? Where are you coming from? Is the car for the lady or the gentleman? Choices, things like that. Not hard. Rafi's uh, been on board for a little over a year. Actually, he got on board a couple weeks after I did here. Um, 
he is majority of his customers, I want to say, well, not majority, but 40% of his customers come from his Facebook, from his Instagram, from friends, family. He's always posted, he always comes up and says, hey, you know what, give me a post, give me a number on one car, let me throw it out there and try to pull people in. He pulls a good three to six clients in every month, month in, month out from his Facebook. And they don't even talk to one another. They just see that you're there. Yeah. And they contact them individually and say, hey, I got a deal, I got a bid. That business card deal, I'd spend three hours to get a few extra deals. Uh, okay. It's going to take three, four hours. Ten minutes. And they're not gonna they're not gonna misplace the business card like they were phone number the phone. Right. It's in their phone and their phone's always with them. I have text messages from six months ago. If I send my kids a text, they get it when? It's not huge. It stays there though until they delete it. So let me ask this question. If you have a customer on the phone, have a customer on the phone and you send them the text. What are the chances of them not asking for you by name when they look at that point, you know, you did something wrong. Yeah. You guys have any input you can give me? Is there anything you heard that you liked or disliked that I can have to get some feedback from you? Yes, One thing is, when you told them, when you asked the customer to go to the website and look at the car online, is that is there like a disadvantage of giving them the online price already? Let me ask this question of you. Were you in the room when I gave you the example that I'm your car salesman and you're the customer? And you came in at 29.5 and the price 32.5. Now let me switch it around on you a little bit. What if you came in and you didn't know the online price is 29,500, it's 32.5, and I didn't tell you about it? You left. You bought the car at 32.5, you make, made an extra $3,000 gross, at what chance that the customer may find out that the, car, the price was sold, the car was advertised for less money? What kind of a legal issue is that? When you have a car advertised for less, and you sell it for more money, and you try to switch the numbers, you call up autotrader.com, change the price on this to 32.5, we just sold it for 32.5. If you find out, customer finds out and they block you, how many millions of people are going to know? How hard is that going to overcome? How much did you really gain? $3,000 gross or $300,000 in lost business? That's where transparency comes in. Transparency is when you find it at $29.5, I offer it to you at $29.5. And don't fail. Remember the slide that I had? Some dealers do it the old way, some dealers do it the old way and the new way. It's only specific dealers. They want a lot of business. And they want to do it the way that the customers came. When I worked for Penske, there's a sentence that was written on every single one of our paychecks. It said, this paycheck was probably brought to you by our customers. It means if you burn them, you're done. How much is transparency worth? A few thousand dollars in gross? A lot of lost business and a bad rap and reputation. You gotta think about that. So we're out of paradigm. Hmm? We're out of paradigm now. Internet has opened up a lot of doors and it's, it's only a shopping center. The thing is, it's a shopping center that puts a lot of people into the bucket. A lot of people don't even know what the heck is happening. How do you feel about that? Being a manager of uh, of your department. What do you think about that? What do you think about transparency? All support you can make you can't mess with your reputation. You might as well kill me. Yeah. The deal, I mean the dealership will lose so much business. Over three thousand dollars plus. That's when you think small as opposed to but you know, I do have to give you a disclaimer of today's presentation. If you heard something you didn't like or something that was against your company policy, that's my disclaimer now. Do not go against your company policy and listen to me. I can only bring you what the high performers are doing and how they do it well for a lot of volume and growth. But follow the company's processes is what I'm recommending. What I have is share of information. The, the, um, the reason why we don't have books for you and 
stuff to follow uh, how you say things and do things is because it's a suggestion to you to put humanity back into something that doesn't have humanity and that's what? Sales. It's the internet. <laughs> It's a really bad thing the way you say it, the way you torture the customers. Because our management is telling you all the time, the sharks are kind of hard to believe about selling it or anything. It's huge. It's Any questions? Is there anything you want to talk about? Bring it up. Sean, is there any of this material in that computer center? It's huge. Huge. So there's one thing in there that I really like for this area because there's a lot of Chinese and Oriental and Persians and Indians. And I have to be Persian. And, and they negotiate. They want the best price. Something very important that you know. They're smarter than average consumer. Why? Because they want to do their due diligence of negotiating for a better price. And the thing is, today, when you want to deal with an in-market dealer, remember, you get rid of high price and low price, you want to deal with an in-market. Nowadays, there's tools like V-Auto. Do you use V-Auto? No, we're not currently using V-Auto. Comparison. If you're using something, a website is assisting you price your cars to an in-market dealer. So what happens when the customer comes in, they didn't get here because of your price was too high. They got here because your price was right in there. And when you say, hey, Mr. Customer, you got here because our price was the best. You sound just like any other salesman. When you say, Mr. Customer, we use a website to price our cars. We know that what we're offering you is better than fair because our used car manager prices our cars. Our new car manager prices our cars less than the median on the market because we want to offer you service right off the bat. And we have a website that decides on pricing. Humans are not involved in that. Now documentation is replacing negotiation. That's what I like. Okay. But you guys are free to go. We're, we're done unless you have questions. Thank you for being here.